Moving on, we had uh, <coughs> uh, UFC on ESPN3, also known as UFC Minneapolis. Francis Ngannou, uh, wow, I mean, that guy has scary power, scary power. Uh, I mean, I, w I did uh, pick uh, Junior Dos Santos to win this fight, as I'm sure people will be very quick to remind me of. Uh, he made, in my opinion, a very tactical error. He was too... I don't know if it was in... I don't know really what it was, but I f like he overextended himself in a very non-technical way, which led to the counter shot that knocked him out. Uh, Dos Santos himself has said that, you know, he, he gave Nganu like a free victory. In some senses he did that because that was a, a pretty bad move. Uh, just kind of like throw, throw in such a, a sloppy attack uh, against such a powerful, dangerous striker. Uh, either way, this was, I mean, the sound of that overhand. Oh my god. I am so glad that I am not a UFC heavyweight because... I mean, fighting Francis and Gano, it's like it's like fighting death. I mean, good luck, good luck. Uh, so this puts Engano with three straight wins, and I'd say, I mean, I don't know why Dana White is being very vague about the, you know, about you know, we'll see. It, it's classic, you know, Dana will see what happens, White. That's so classic, uh, and I understand. Obviously, you, you can't. Like you can't book a title fight now between Nganu and the winner because we don't know who the winner is But I still feel like you can kind of guarantee someone's position, which is the only fair thing to do here I mean Nganu has three straight knockout wins two of them over former UFC heavyweight champions uh, It would be illogical to give anyone else. I mean even if it's Stipe I mean if Stipe would beats DC uh, and it's a rematch. Is it the hottest rematch in, in the history of a heavyweight division? No, but I mean, still, I feel like Ngannou has done enough now in his uh, in his away time and with his uh, during his win streak to to earn himself a rematch. Nobody else is more deserving of it than him. So I don't know, but I'm pretty sure we will see him get it anyway. Joseph Benavidez uh, once again knocked out Jussie Formiga and truly cemented his place at the top of the division. Uh, he is the last person to defeat reigning flyweight and bantamweight champion uh, Henry Cejudo. So, unfortunately, Cejudo now he is away in injury, but I do think that the first title defense he makes will be at flyweight. Which means that Aljamain Sterling and Peter Jan can fight for a number one contender spot, which I think would be a fantastic fight. Uh, <clears throat> Damien Maya, like I, like I kind of predicted, would be a little too much for Anthony Rocco Martin, who, uh, I mean, it's it's hard. Damien Maya is a tall order. Uh, honestly, I thought that was not a good fight for uh, for Rocco Martin to begin with. I just feel that like he his distance management would not really work uh, against Maya, and yeah, it didn't. Uh, but, I mean, it, it was still not a bad performance. I mean, one of the judges scored it 28-28 draw. So, I mean, Martin, he, he had some good moments, definitely. But his four-fight winning streak is now is now broken. But I do see him coming back stronger and better from this. I mean, this was the first time he truly faced someone of that championship caliber. And, uh, you know, you don't always win those fights. Uh, sometimes you need a loss to be able to sort of figure out the holes in your own game. That's kind of what I see happening here. I think uh, Anthony Rocco Martin will be back and uh, better than ever. Uh, Vince Buchel surprised me. Damn, I, I thought uh, Roosevelt Roberts was gonna... Uh, was gonna pick... Uh, was gonna win here, but... Uh, <sighs> It's like Vince Pichel, one of those guys you can't really count out. I mean, he's he's just, I think he's won five out of his last six fights now. And he was good in the clinch. He was really, really good in the clinch. Uh, the, the defensive knees and stuff like that that he threw, it was just, uh, it was a joy to see. Uh, and uh, congrats to Vince Pichel. Drew Dober defeated uh, Marco Polo Reyes by a uh, knockout of the first round, or TKO. Again, like I thought, I mean... Polo Reyes, he, he kind of leaves himself a bit open, I feel. He's a, 
a little bit on the sloppier side and I just felt what Dober was, I mean, he's a powerful guy. You can tell, if you just look at his jawline, you can tell he's, he, you know, he packs a lot of power and, uh, you know, I'm not sure which spinning back kick is worse, Chris Weidman's or Paul Craig's because, ugh, you know, just don't throw spinning back kicks just like that because it's way too easy to get countered if you do it carelessly. Alonzo Manyfield, uh, I was at least right in picking there. Uh, he finished uh, Paul Craig via brutal knockout. I will say though that the extra shot afterward for Manyfield was was reprehensible. Uh, I thought that was really. I mean, he, it was even after that uh, Herb Dean dove in. So I mean, I don't expect the result to change or anything like, like that. But I would not be surprised if a commission perhaps. Uh, took some kind of, uh, if they fine him or something like that, I would actually be okay with that because that extra shot that he threw after that Dean had clearly stopped the fight, it, it was it was bad to see. And uh, yeah, I mean, regardless, Craig he seemed okay afterwards, so I mean, it's not necessarily a big deal. But you don't want to see stuff like that in MMA. I mean, if a if referee has you know, dove in and stop, stop the fight, then stop the strikes. I understand, you know, you're caught in the moment. It's very easy to get stuck. This is just his, uh, I believe, second fight in the UFC. So he's still a little bit new. He's still getting used to some of that. Uh, so let's perhaps give him the benefit of a doubt. Uh, Ricardo Ramos uh, picked up win over Journey Newson. Your boy, Eric Anders, got exactly what he needed. Uh, he knocked out... Uh, Vinicius Moreira in the first round and uh, nice to see him return to the win column. I mean, he has had a, a tough run. This broke a three fight losing streak for him. Uh, and he's just a fun character, you know, he's uh, he's up to, you know, he's always up for a good scrap, whether it's in his best interest or not. Uh, so, yeah, overall, uh, very fun event. Uh, Jared Gordon also had a, a, a really good win over Dan Moret uh, and a very good post-fight speech, which I would recommend checking out. So, who should some of these guys fight then? I mean, I've already made it pretty clear that I feel Nganu and uh, Benavides really have done enough to, you know, earn their... Uh, uh, earner title shot, but that still does leave us with a couple of others. I mean, we've got Damian Maya, for example, who beat uh, Anthony Rocco Martin. If we take a look at the rankings, uh, Damian Maya is ranked on t at 12th place. And there's not a lot of, like, obvious uh, fights for him. Uh, I mean, I guess we could say maybe uh, his countryman, Elizo Zaleski de Santos, uh, who is has looked really, really, really good, uh, I gotta say. I don't believe he's booked for a fight. Let's see here. Yeah, he's, that's right. He's coming off of a very quick win over uh, Curtis Melander. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would say, why not uh, Elizo dos Santos versus... Uh, uh, versus Damian Maya. I mean, that would be a good test for uh, for Dos Santos, who it's safe to say that he's uh, he's earned himself, uh, you know, a top twelve or a top uh, ten, a top fifteen fighter. Because I mean, he's five straight wins now, and you, I mean, you got to do something. I mean, he made such quick work of Millinder that uh, it, it's it's only logical to give him. Uh, a more highly ranked fighter so yeah I mean why not why not Maya I'd be down for that we also have that's right Vince Pichel and Drew Dober you know why not let those guys fight it out uh, they're both lightweights uh, both coming off of wins uh, both had losses previously yeah, I, I, it's kind of staring me right in the face, but I, yeah, why not uh, Vince Pichel, Drew Dober? I think that could be a really fun fight. 
I'm in Alonzo Minifield. Oh, light heavyweight, you know, it's it's an interesting time in light heavyweight because it's very easy to get moved up the ranks, very easy to fall out of them. It's, I feel like there's a lot more space there when we're on like talent stacked divisions, like, you know, welterweight, featherweight, lightweight. Is it time to give him someone in the top 15? Mm, I don't know. I, st I still feel like there's a lot of very strong and like promising uh light heavyweights on their way up i mean the, the three biggest ones who uh, uh I, i've mentioned several times johnny walker alexander rakic and uh dominic reyes are the three up and coming uh uh three up and coming sort of like rising stars in light heavyweight that's the way i see it. it's and someone like that, I would probably be, be a little bit better reserved. I mean, Misha Sirkunov could be an okay fight, but he's actually booked for a fight in uh, UFC Vancouver. So let's just take a quick look at the UFC light heavyweight division, see if we can find up, you know, a proper good uh, opponent for Alonzo Manifield. He's a 2-0 now. You know, Ryan Spann would not be a bad idea. He's also coming off of a quick knockout over uh, Antonio Rogério Nogueira. That would not would not be a bad uh, fight. Uh, Magomed Ankalaev could also work. Uh, he's coming off of a win over Klitsen Obro in Prague. I mean, yeah, I would say that those are probably the two best um, <coughs> candidates right now. Uh, there's not really anyone else who I necessarily, but you know, someone that jumps out and you know sticks out in that way. So yeah, why not uh, Magomed Ankalaev or uh, Ryan Span? I say but either one of those is uh, is a good fight. Uh, or we, I mean, the Polish actually, uh, uh, Michal. These these Polish names, God, it's, they're too hard. <laughs> Michal Oleksijuk. See, I have, I have my stepsisters are half Polish, so I really I gotta step up my game there. Uh, step it up, right? Step. Yeah. I'm sorry, that was terrible. Anyway, moving on. Uh, big news in the middleweight division as Kelvin Gastelum uh, is out of surgery. He's ready to come back, and he has accepted. A fight with uh, Jack uh, Jack Hermanson. Now, this is not a UFC fight offer. It has just been Hermanson campaigning uh, to face uh, Gastelum at the, in the main event at UFC Copenhagen, which is a solid main event and it's a perfect one for UFC's debut in Denmark. So on Twitter, Kelvin Gastelum writes, "My timetable for my return in Saudi Octagon is November. No doubt about it. Jack with Joker MMA." Jack Helmanson is the fight to make. So he's definitely down for facing Helmanson, but November, UFC's debut in Denmark is September 27th. So this means that unless he can speed up his return time, we're not going to see this fight as the main event at uh, UFC Copenhagen, which would be a big shame. Uh, I personally would love to see that fight. Um, but I do think that even if they have to find another fight to put as a main event at UC Copenhagen, this is definitely the most logical matchup right now at middleweight. Uh, I mean, obviously we're going to have a unification bout now between uh, Whitaker and uh, Israel Adesanya. Uh, Yo Romero already fought twice for the title, didn't even make weight the second time. I would not be entirely surprised if he perhaps is considering light heavyweight considering some of the weight cut issues um but so yeah you can't give romero rockhold ranked at number three he's moving to light heavyweight as well and then we got number four gastelum and number five helmanson after that we got jacare souza chris weidman paulo costa oh that's right romero is booked to face paulo costa so i guess the only I mean, even if Romero wins in devastating fashion, I you know I can't see him getting a title shot after after that. And if Costa wins, I could see people making the case. But a 
I do not see him winning over Joel Romero. And two, I still think that that's not necessarily enough. Uh, I just feel that Gastelum and Halmanson, they, they're, they've done this a little bit more as a reason they're more highly ranked. And uh, yeah, I say those guys should face each other if it is in, in November or, or if it's in the main event at UC Copenhagen. Regardless, that is, you know, he couldn't be more right. That is the fight to make. Um, I would actually have Helmas on winning that fight, and it's it all comes down to pace, uh, pace here and movement, uh, because he's got that weird kind of in and out jumpy striking style, which does throw a lot of people off. Now, Gastelum obviously he's got a lot of power in his hands. We saw him knock out Michael Bisbing, and if he connects properly with, with, against Helmanson, he can definitely stop him early, but. We know that uh, Gastelum has, you know, proper conditioning, but he does get tired. Uh, and I see Helmelson as having just a, you know, a slightly bigger gas tank there. Uh, I think that the grappling will be interesting, because while I think that Gastelum probably has slightly better wrestling, uh, at least when it comes to takedowns, I'd say when it comes to submission ability, Jack Helmanson is more dangerous. I mean, he was close to tapping out Jacare Souza, who was one of the best grapplers in the entire UFC. Uh, so I think this would be a close fight. It would be a tough fight. I'm actually not super happy about it because I like really like both of them and I don't want to see them lose uh, or see one of them lose. But uh, yeah, I, I think that is the fight to make and I do think Helmanson actually comes out on top there. We saw now latest, I mean, short notice against Jacare Souza, what he could accomplish. I think uh, it's time that, uh, yeah, we're gonna see the Joker shoot to the top.